This is the Magnetic Field Homework Booklet, question 15. There's quite a lot of reading at the start of this question, so I've tried to organise the information into a, just a very simple table as I read the question. So, two charged particles, P and Q, move in circular orbits in a magnetic field of uniform flux density. The particles have the same charge, but the mass of P is less than the mass of Q. So I've just made myself a, a visual way of remembering that information. The time period is the time taken uh, for particle P, that's Tp, to complete one orbit, whereas Tq is the time for particle Q to complete one orbit. And you can see that uh, in the question I'm really needing to compare values for these two time periods. The only difference between the two particles is their values for mass, as shown in my summary here. And so I'm wanting to link uh, mass to time period. Now there isn't an obvious link that you will be familiar with, so you need to think about some of the general physics associated with this question. Now, the time period for a circular orbit is given by the circumference divided by the speed. But you'll see that's not bringing you in the variable uh, of mass that you require. So, backtracking, you can think about the forces involved in this situation. The centripetal force is provided by the magnetic force on the moving charged particle. You can rearrange uh, this equation to get an expression for the speed of the particle moving in orbit. Now combining that with your expression for time period and uh, simplifying, you can see that the time period is proportional to the mass. From this it follows that since the mass of P is less than the mass of Q, so the time period of P will be less than the time period of Q, leading to the answer C. Question 16. A circu circular coil of diameter 140 millimetres has 850 turns. It is placed so its plane is perpendicular to a horizontal magnetic field of flux density 45 millitesla. This is shown in the diagram above. You're asked to calculate the magnetic flux passing through the coil when in this position. So, quite simply, the flux is given by the product of the flux density and the area. Just be careful as you were given diameter, so in working out the cross-sectional area of the coil you need um, pi multiplied by the radius squared. And finally, consider the units for your answer. Magnetic flux is measured in units called Weber's. Next, you're told that the coil is rotated through 90 degrees about its vertical axis in a time of 120 milliseconds. You're asked to find the change in magnetic flux linkage. The term flux linkage should draw your attention to the number of turns in the coil. You can consider each turn of the coil as linking the flux. So the flux linkage in the previous part of the question is the flux multiplied by the number of turns. Now that is what we have worked out here, 850 multiplied by your previous answer. However, you were asked for the change in flux linkage due to this 90 degree rotation. When the coil has rotated 90 degrees, there will be no flux linkage in this case. The coil will be facing the field in a sideways direction, so no field lines flow through the area. So in fact, the change of flux linkage equals the maximum flux linkage that could be associated with this coil. 
The units for flux linkage uh, note are Weber turns. Finally, you are asked to calculate the average EMF induced in the coil when it is rotated. So here you're going to apply Faraday's law that the magnitude of the induced EMF equals the rate of change of flux linkage. Quite simply, the flux linkage divided by the time taken. And that gives you a value of 4.9 volts.